All right, everybody, welcome back to part three of our tutorial of Photomatix Pro and Lightroom and Photoshop. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go in for a change, and I'm actually going to go into Tone Compressor, and I'm going to do something I never do, just for something for fun. We're going to come in here, and we're going to play with our image. We're going to bring our tonal range compression up. Um, actually, now we're going to take that down. And we're going to bring our contrast adaptation which I think is an interesting slider. We're going to move that up a little bit and we're going to move our white point up and we're going to move our black point up and we're going to move our saturation up just a little bit. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to save and re-import this image back into Lightroom for part three so that we can take a look and yeah, we're going to replace the one I have that I was playing with yesterday. But we're going to go ahead and bring that in and I'm going to have to turn my filter off real quick so we can find that. And let's see here. Filter off. There we found our image. I Sorry about that little blurb there, people. I just wanted to skip over it so you didn't have to look through all of my images. Uh, it'll take a moment for this to come back in and to be configured by Lightroom. But that should be up in just a moment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play with it a little bit. Um, as soon as it finishes, there we go, rendering preview, there we go. And you'll see the big, huge saturation difference. Our original that I looked at was this, and this is our huge saturation. And what we did, we can see in our histogram how much that has really changed in Photomatix. And we've really brightened that image up a bit, and we're going to take this into the develop module. And once we have that into the develop module, then we can go in and we can change the things that we want to change. We're still picking up our vignetting on, in our corners, which is good, and we're getting a lot of good color in here, but we're really, really blowing out a lot of this, too. You can see how we're peaking way up here. If we highlight our low points, we get the darkness along the edges of the water, but that's natural for a night scene, so that's not a big problem. Uh, we'll notice that we're not getting too many blown out portions in the light areas, so we can go in and play how we want to play with this and we could change our exposure, we could change our recovery, our fill light, if we wanted to bring our fill light and brighten it up, we decided that didn't look good. Our recovery of our darker areas, if we want, we could bring that in, see how that changed our uh, histogram a little bit. We can change the brightness, which we're going to kick that back just a touch, and we're going to increase our contrast just a smidge to about a plus 10. We'll go with plus 11. And for clarity purposes, we're going to crank that up to about a 33. Vibrance, obviously, we don't need to go too high with that, so I think what we'll do is we'll actually kick that back about 5 or 10. We'll stick with 7. And our saturation will kick that back about a minus 5 or, well, let's go to a minus 20. Let's really jump back. Well, that's too far. Let's go back to about a minus 7 to 10, a little more realistic. We can go into our tonal curves and we can do change our tonal curves to from linear to medium contrast, strong contrast. We take a look at strong contrast, it's a way too dark. If we go with medium contrast, still a little dark. So we'll stick with linear. We could go in and change our colors if we wanted to. We could desaturate the oranges just a little bit, which makes everything look really red. Or we could desaturate our yellows, if we can grab the slider, and bring that back if we want. We're just going to accept the defaults on those, so we'll just jump back here, and we'll go down, and we could do split toning if we want, we could do sharpening if we want, I think we do want to do a little sharpening, we should zoom in so that we can see that, we'll bring that up to about, I think 80, I like 80, and we'll increase our radius to about 1.5 pixels. And let's see what we got here. Now that's a pretty good image in, in and of itself, but what we're going to do is we're going to do one more thing. We're going to throw this into CS4, and we're going to edit the copy with the Lightroom adjustments. And it'll take just a second to bring into Photoshop. And we're in our last stages here. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this, and we're going to duplicate our layer. And then what we're going to do with that layer is we're going to go Filter, Other, High Pass Filter, and we're going to set that around 80. You could set it way down low, but you don't get as dramatic of an effect. Or you can set it all the way up to 100 and, or 250, and that's way too much. 
Uh, I like 80. So we're just going to go in here and we're going to type in 80. And then we're going to click OK. And that'll take just a second. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change our blend mode. And we're going to change that blend mode to hard light. And we see that that's a bit harsh. That really makes things pop, but it makes them pop a bit too much. So then what we're going to do is bring our opacity down to about 50 to 50, well, 40 to 50 percent. I think we'll go with about 45. And I think that looks pretty good. Now what we'll do real quick is we'll take a look to see how we're doing with noise. And our new noise isn't really all that bad. It's, there's some in there, but that mu not that much. So we'll go back to full screen here. And what we can do is if we really feel uncomfortable about the noise, one of the things that I usually do is I go into Noiseware Professional and see how that's going to change things. Seeing I'm working on the high pass filter side, which is wrong, uh, it won't do a whole lot. So we'll go back into our background layer and we'll go into Noiseware again and see what it does for us. And what we'll do is we'll bring this down so that we can see we can see the noise there when we let go it shows us the noise and we're set at the default now you could put this into night scene or something like that or choose one of the other defaults you could go in and you could uh, change whatever you wanted to change uh, and change the sliders but we're not reviewing noise wear today so we'll just go with night scene and we'll click OK and it'll take a moment for that filter to kick in and what we have is voila our finished image pretty good image. I think it looks pretty good. I think we can see that it is a big difference from where we started. We hit File Save and that'll re import back into Lightroom all by itself there in just a second. It's writing the Photoshop format as it always does when we save. And boom, once we get finished thinking, jump over to Lightroom, we can see our three different images. First we see our original, which we'll take, there we go, that's our original one of three. That was the medium, so that was the standard zero compensation. Then we had the one that was minus a third. And then we had the overexposed. Then we had our output from Photomatix Pro. And then when we did a few more uh, tweaks in Photoshop, we came up with this. So we've gone from an average of this to our final image here, which is a wonderful, wonderful cityscape of the wonderful city of Philadelphia. And I hope you all enjoyed our review of Photomatix and our HDR tutorial. I hope you have a great day, and until next time, happy shooting!